All right, we've got a very strong storm riding the southern jet stream right now, and it's going to bring some pretty heavy precipitation from the plains all the way to the southeast over the next few days with some flooding concerns developing there, as well as with this new big storm that's going to hit the west. But will that one head elsewhere? Details on that and when this potential ridge could collapse over the central United States and lead to cooler air. All that in this video. Thank you so much for joining me here at One Nation Weather. Please hit that subscribe button if you enjoy the rest of this. Now, I do have to brief you here on what we've got going on right now as I film this. We've got a severe thunderstorm watch issued in the slight severe risk on your screen here. That includes the far western Red River Valley, especially of Oklahoma there, uh, and Texas border, all the way on down there to the Rio Grande and south central Texas, um, including areas just west of San Antonio, especially here. Um, and as you can see, through this evening, we've got storms blossoming on up there over west central Texas, just east of Lubbock, and kind of making their way in between Lubbock and down Dallas as we head towards 8, 9 o'clock this evening with a linear segment possible. Some of these storms towards the southern end of this line as well will be especially capable of larger hail. But again, we'll be watching all these storms for at least a chance for hail, some damaging winds, and maybe a brief spin-up tornado. And you can see how they continue pushing on towards the Dallas and Austin area as we make our way into the 11, 12 a.m., uh, excuse me, 11 p.m., 12 a.m. time frame of tonight. Um, and then as we make our way overnight and into our Saturday morning, you can see here the heavier rains and showers and storms continue on up through east eastern Texas as well as south central Texas as we head towards 3, 4 a.m. Now, let's take a look at the overall timing of this because we've got this southerly flow pumping on up into the plains, but we've also got this kind of low pressure system that's stationed over the Texas and Oklahoma panhandle into early tomorrow morning, bringing that wraparound flow and some heavy snowfall into the mountain west here. So here we go, 9, 10 a.m. in the morning here for your Saturday. Very heavy rainfall, some maybe embedded severe thunderstorms possible down there into the Arklotex. A little break in the rain up there through parts of central Oklahoma. Oklahoma, but you can see it really picks back on up closer to the high plains. We've also got this heavy snow in the Rockies just west of Denver on up there into parts of western Wyoming, and then that goes into northern Idaho as well as western Montana at that time. Now, as we play this out further into the afternoon hours, you can see we've got it kind of got two branches now to the rainfall side of the storm, one of them pushing through Louisiana and southern Mississippi with some flooding concerns and isolated severe weather, not out of the question with that. The other branch of the heavier rain is up there in the high plains as well as into parts of east Eastern Wyoming, meeting up with that snowfall that continues over parts of the Mountain West. Continuing to play this out as we make our way late Saturday and into our Sunday now, this is as we go 1 a.m. Saturday night and into our early Sunday morning eastern parts of Mississippi, especially on over there into western Alabama. That's where these storms will now be pushing at that point on the southern end of this cold front that will be pushing through. Um, but again, notice we've still got the snow going on over the mountain west, so this is a pretty prolonged snow event, and some of this will be quite heavy north of Helena there in um, Montana, as well as north of Billings there in Montana as well. Continuing to move this slider along, and you can see as we head into the midday time frame of our Sunday, still some pretty hefty showers and storms. Some of these pushing through Florida will also have to be watched closely. In terms of the severe weather threat day by day out of this, again, we talked about the Friday threat already. As we go into our Saturday here, we'll see that low end threat kind of right along the immediate Gulf Coast of Texas and Louisiana, but especially including places like Houston and there in Texas, all hazard threat. But again, all threats are on the lower side of things. Same thing goes as we go into Sunday over parts of South Central Florida with a likely all hazard threat, maybe just including hail there um, as we go through Sunday, especially in the midday time frame. Now looking at Weather Bell Maps free trial in the so description. Here we go with the total precipitation out of what we've got out of this system because it is going to be quite heavy at times. Looking at that national digital forecast database through this weekend, again, heavier pockets of rain are going to kind of initiate as that flow comes out of the south and southeast with the way the system is stationed. Parts of southern Nebraska and north central Kansas could pick up one to three inches of rain at the higher end, um, but it is looking like the best chance for widespread inch plus totals is going to be over there from Texas and Arkansas and Louisiana all the way on over there to Alabama with the heaviest of totals really going to showing, be showing on up there into parts of Louisiana and southern Mississippi. That's where our biggest flood threat is going to be on Saturday as those totals could locally get upwards of, say, two to four inches. And this is zone that I'm circling right here. Um, but wouldn't rule out eastern Texas getting in on some of that overnight tonight as well. Again, I'm filming this Friday evening. Um, eastern Georgia as well as on up there into parts of places like Jacksonville, Florida, this is where some heavy one to three inch totals will be possible. Um, but again, I bet some someone here in the south, southern quarter of the United States is going to pick up closer to five inches of rain by the time the system is all said and done. Now remember, I was talking about that snowfall here in the Mountain West. There's going to be two primary zones we get this. One up there in the Rockies, um, west of Denver, especially their high elevations picking up one to two feet in a pretty widespread fashion there. Um, and then on up into the higher elevations of Idaho, northwestern Wyoming, and into western parts of Montana, some of these totals 
levels getting a, up into that foot plus category as well. Some of the highest terrain getting up into that two to three feet range there. I um, mean, you can also see very heavy snowfall there into the Sierra Nevada range. That's out of our next system. In fact, I want to talk about that system right now here as we've got a strong atmospheric river into California and this event is expected to impact California Saturday night all the way into Tuesday. This atmospheric river will be of longer duration and stronger and it will be stronger than the one that moved through California on Thursday with heavy mountain snowfall, um, particularly heavy across parts of the Sierra Nevada in those elevations of 5,000 to 6,000 feet. Disruptions to daily life, including difficult to impossible travel conditions, are expected there. Um, we'll also be watching for the excessive rainfall and flooding with that moderate flood threat already being issued further south. You can see areas along the beaches there and the lower elevations from parts of, say, San Francisco, curling all the way on down the coast to Los Angeles some spots picking up upwards of four inches of rain. This is a very dangerous event. And of course, powerful damaging onshore winds are expected over the central California coast and coastal ranges with potentially damaging high surf as well. So we're again, we're really concerned about that system. And let's kind of time out the overall future radar over the country as we head over the next several days. Of course, again, we've got the system over the south that we're worried about. We've already talked about that one with the heavy rainfall and flooding, maybe some storms. But again, you can see as we go through Sunday, this atmospheric river rocks and on Sunday here over parts of the Sierra Nevada range and some of that snow really indicating how strong the system is pushing past those mountains and into parts of Nevada, um, Oregon, as well as parts of the mountain passes in Idaho as well. Again, the rain will be very heavy along the coast um, through Sunday there in California as well. Um, and we continue to see this flow into the mountain west as we make our way through our Monday. Um, it's still some light to moderate precipitation hitting most of the California and Oregon coastline. Snow in the higher elevations there into the Rockies as well. So that's why we're particularly particularly concerned about this atmospheric river even more than that last one. And then as we make our way um, late Tuesday night and into our Wednesday early morning, we'll see some of that snowfall pick on up again over parts of Idaho, northwestern Wyoming, and as well as into Montana there. This looks like some sort of low pressure system will form over the north central plains, kind of as we head towards the mid to late week time frame of next week. Looks like it could be pretty broad with precipitation in a light to moderate fashion stretched over a big chunk of areas that could stretch from places like the Four Corners all the way to the Great Lakes. Again, it doesn't look like any sort of very organized or large storm system will get going at this point, but it does look like a large area could be affected by at least some light to moderate precipitation as this low pressure system kind of drags the front along into the east all the way in towards our Friday, where parts of the eastern states of the United States could be impacted as well. Maybe some showers and storms on the southern end of this, and again, beyond that point, it's kind of uncertain as to what's going to happen with the pattern. But here's your 6 to 10 day temp precipitation probability outlook here. You can see the climate prediction center, hinting at the fact that most of the country looking to be above average with precipitation, especially over the southwest, as well as the central plains as we head during that February 8th through um, 12th time frame. Um, the only areas may be lacking precipitation compared to average, closer to parts of the New England zones, as well as on down to Florida there. And then with your 6 to 10 day temperature outlook here, you can see it's looking much warmer than average as bridging has just been holding strong and continues to hold strong there over the Great Lakes region. Um, on back towards the west, though, it does look like some cooler air, well below average temperatures building there over parts of Los Angeles, on down and into places like Las Vegas, as well as on over to Phoenix there um, in Arizona, a very cool air mass, at least compared to average, I should say, moving over that region. Here's those temperature anomalies to be exact here as we make our way through you know, the day today, we've seen these warmer than average temperatures as I'm filming this on your Friday over most of the north central United States. And as we head through this weekend, that's not really looking to change. You can see those deep maroon colors, even some of those whites and reds popping on up there. Some of those temperatures in the Dakotas and Minnesota, as well as on up in there towards the northern Great Lakes region, 20, 30 degrees above normal for this time of the year. Most areas not really cooler than average, unless you're here with that um, northerly flow that that low that's going to be in the southeast as we head into early next week is going to cause. And again, that's not going to cause any snow. That's just low pressure system related. Um, and then as you can see, heading towards Wednesday of next week, looking warmer than average. We continue to see warm air pumped up over the plains and those anomalies 20, 30 degrees above average over the Dakotas and Minnesota. Notice though cooler than average air by the mid to late week time frame there in the Mountain West. And some of those anomalies will be 20 degrees below average in that zone. By the time we head towards Friday, February 9th here, a lot of warm air extended over the eastern half of the country. Decent cool air building over the southwest and four corners, especially with higher elevations in Arizona, looking to be quite chilly at that time. 
And then again, once we get beyond there, kind of uncertain. But I talked about in my latest video, which was the February forecast, we talked about the potential for cold air to spill into the country as we head towards mid-month. Still see that potential. Don't know if this cold air mass that the euro is hinting at towards Monday, February 12th, of about 5 to 10 degrees below average over the south central is it. I think the chance for a bigger storm that could bring something like that might come towards mid-month. But again, it's still time um, to kind of figure that out. And what I mean by mid-month, by the way, is closer to the 14th, 15th, or 16th. Um, but what I can tell you with these above average temperatures is that it is quite warm. And again, it, while it's anomalously warm over the north central, of course, it's still the, you know, the warm mist over the south central United States, if that that makes sense here. And as we head towards Monday afternoon, you can see over the south central United States warming up uh, but into the 60s and 70s there, especially over Texas. But some spots there into the hot northern high plains to get close to 60 Monday afternoon. And uh, if you're along and south of that line, I just drew, you're pretty much at least 50 degrees, um, which really proves how far north these really warm temperatures are going for this time of the year. By the way, I've got two extra channels, O and W Beyond. That's where I'll be posting occasional extra forecasts. So check that out and hit the subscribe button link for that. In the description link to my um you know cloud photo channel as well as in the description that is o and w photo thanks so much for watching this video credits on screen